Halloween night, 2016, I was downtown Austin doing street ministry. That's when I first encountered members of the Church of Wells, and we started talking. They said, hey, we're doing what you're doing. We're following Jesus. Do you want to go with us? And I said, sure. So I agreed to head out to Wells. It seemed like I was with people who were really out there to make a difference. As we were walking in my car, they offered the bottle of water. I believe I was drugged. As we drove through the night out to Wells, they began to just kind of preach and preach. It was just relentless onslaught to the point where the words that he was saying didn't even make sense anymore. The compound was approximately a few acres. They had several log cabins. 70 to 80 members lived at their compound. Looking back in retrospect, it was certainly a red flag. As they began to show me around, the new members were already aware that I was there and were looking forward to meeting me. I've come to learn that cults tend to do what they call love bombing, where they continually make the new person that they've brought in feel loved so much more than the rest of your world. The Church of Wells is a cult in my belief. They tend to disguise themselves as people who are running a legitimate ministry. I am convinced that I was drugged in my time at the Church of Wells. I remember in the middle of the day that I just completely passed out. One of the infant girls was left on a plastic lawn chair. Some of the men of the Church of Wells approached the baby. She's crying because her mom isn't there. And uh, men begin to preach to the baby that you're learning patience and this is making you better and closer to God. I would have had to have been on drugs to be okay with that situation. On the third day that I'd finally gotten reception, I had no idea my family was looking for me. A lot of the calls and the texts started flooding in explaining that it's a cult and that you should get out and that you're in danger. The very day that my family and friends drove up, during the initial meeting out in front of the cabin, it turned into a big debate. Mark and Rick began to talk and preach at my family, essentially trying to antagonize them. It sounded like two families arguing over custody. It was absolutely a miracle, without a shadow of a doubt, that I'm here to talk to you today. Because people don't just walk out of that place in the middle of the day. People go there and are not heard from again. Okay, Jordan, we are glad to be talking to you today. And I, I wanna be very clear that we have to address all of this as allegations because they have not been charged with wrongdoing, they've not been tried, they've not been convicted, so these are allegations. You are fully entitled to your opinion and entitled to describe your experiences, and that's what we want you to do. Now, you say that you drove four hours uh, out of Austin and they gave you a bottle of water, you think there was something in that water, right? It's very likely, yeah. yeah. And you were drug tested. You said you did a hair follicle test and found two drugs. Uh, and were you on either of those drugs before you went to the Church of Wells? None. Did you have prescriptions for those drugs? No. Did you take those drugs no. on, recreationally on the street? Never. Or anything? So He do doesn't have, even take aspirin. Okay, when he's got and, a and you have no history of taking those drugs since that time. None whatsoever. Okay, but you found them in your system, so you're concluding that he got them while he was there. And you said at one point you were just sitting on a couch in the middle of the day and just kind of fell over. Like just knocked out. Like yeah. I remember my head just going straight back and I was out. Is that typical for you? I would say no. When you got there, where did you go? They, you get out of the car, what do they do with you? Uh, they took me up to their main cabin uh -huh. um, and they, they showed me you know, where, they, where they're at and where they do you know, their thing. Mm -hmm. And they showed me a room off the back side of the cabin and they said, this is for you, you can stay here and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Do you believe that there is an effort towards mind control? Absolutely. And what are the efforts or techniques that you think is are going on there? Um, it's kind of like a beratement of your character. It's a, it's a severe distortion of what the Word of God says. You, you came in there with a position that you had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and that you were saved and you wanted to share that with other people. But their position is you're not saved unless you're saved here. Exactly. So they're critical of your faith and your beliefs, correct? That's correct. 